Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is John Petrovich. Today I'm going to be reading Spawn Batman comic. So here we go. Alright, I hope you guys like it. Here we go. A cold night, a dark night, an unforgiving wind, a merciless city, Gotham. At the waterfront, Gotham's distant roar, the lapping of briny waves against rotted wooded pilings. Startling curses, muffled gunshots, horrid pounding, shrieks of pain, dull moans, near silence. Inside a warehouse, salty smells of blood and sweat, a silent shadow of a man, a cold night, a dark night. Batman. Musty air sunk into lungs filled with fire, blood surging from heart to shoulder and streaming hotly down his arm. Not a moment spent acknowledging, acknowledging the pain. Not a moment wasted. Batman, protector, avenger, detective, champion. Hm, <laughs> punks. You're lucky I went so easy on you. Tonight's foes are left behind him, broken things. But the true horror lies ahead. Weapons sold by agents of a fallen dictatorship to Gotham Street gangs. Weapons built for a war that never happened. Guns, grenades, rocket launchers, and strange high-tech devices that hint to the smaller horrors that would have followed the nuclear nightmare. A pair of battle gloves, humming with the promise of power, then a sudden hiss, not human. Huh? Clang! Uh, the robot pauses, stupid as it is lethal, thinking Batman's dead. Not human. No chance against this thing. No chance unless. Move slowly. Stay cautious. Ignore the pain. Stay cautious. The gloves. Humming with the power of promise. No time to study them. Just put them on. And pray the Soviet slave, who knew them knowing what he was doing. Neural enhancers lock. A sudden surge of superhuman strength. An almost dizzying wave of confidence. As the robot hunches. Taking aim, building a charge that could blast that man to dust. No hesitation since year one, that man is known, when there is no defense. Attack. <laughs> the robot staggers, confused. A visor shatters, the sound almost pretty, revealing something warm and something frightened inside. At least part of this thing is human. <coughs> what? What? Where am I? Frightened, confused, but still moving for the kill. A cyborg of some kind. Its human part deprived of free will. Stop it. Disable it. Don't kill it. I don't know where I am. It's like wrestling a jackhammer. I don't know where I am. Get inside. Get past it. To him. I can't feel my arms. English. He's speaking English, not Russian. English with an American accent, a Brooklyn accent. What is going on here? And now it shudders and stops. Batman has won. But the air goes hot, and a stringent signal brings a ringing to Batman's ears. I can't feel my legs! A self-destruct sequence, free of what's human, saying his life may still be possible. I can't feel anything! I can't... Ah. Then the earth trembles, and the air turns to fire. And what was once man, it's only a piece of evidence. And it came as no surprise that Dr. Margaret Love, founder and president of Heal the World, was awarded the Lemire Prize, Humanitarian Achievement. Our work has only begun, said Dr. Love. I accept this honor. Not in my own name, but on behalf of those thousands of caring and sharing volunteers who have brought the reward of self actualization empowerment, and attitude adjustment to the dis enfranchised of our troubled planet. A damp place where sounds echo upward till they are lost in the endless darkness. The Bat Cave. I took the liberty of preparing herb tea for you, Master Bruce. It's chamomile, the tea that is utterly renowned for relieving stress in vigilantes suffering from obsessive disorder. Not right now, Alfred. Just patch up my shoulder. The blood's getting in my way. Very good, sir, but you might consider removing your cowl, so as to facilitate my efforts. After all, you're no need to conceal your identity here. 
Sometimes I'm more comfortable with the mask on. <laughs> no fingers. No fingerprints. But it's still got his teeth. Scanning for dental record matchup. Here we go. Really? So the T. Louis Beckus, age 42, vagrant, acute alcoholic, has seen 42nd Street men mention mid Manhattan, presumed dead. What's the brain of a New York bum doing inside of a Soviet cyborg? One severed head's as good as the next, isn't it? Pity. About the T, I mean, the answer's got to be in New York. They say chamomile is sure to prevent nightmares. Even a self-inflicted variety. I don't get nightmares. I give them. No need for punchline, sir. You're among friends. Put this on ice. These gloves go in a vault. Be careful with them. As you wish, sir. A pleasure speaking with you, as always. New York City. The hunt begins. But very soon, a woman's scream splits the night. And Batman remembers the little boy who watched in horror and disbelief as a mugger's bullets tore through the flesh and bone of Thomas and Martha Wayne. And he follows and knows the hunt must wait, if only for a moment. As the world's pilot program provides New York's homeless, but not with food and shelter, but with hope for a better life, through the wonders of attitude and adjustment and social realignment, reports are flooding in from our desks from throughout Midtown Muggers stop cold in their tracks. Of innocent dear victims rescued by a shadowy savior, could it be that a certain cake crusader has come to the Big Apple? I had it all, but forsake the materialism of our age and sound spiritual enlightenment. Pass the bottle, will ya? Among the dregs of humanity, Batman listens for any scant clue. Mostly he hears sob stories and outright nonsense. But now, and then he hears... Legends of those of their own named album possessed with magic powers. Nonsense, he thinks. I saw it. A man. There was uh, a hole right through him, standing there like he didn't notice. Next thing I knew, the other guy was toast. But Batman is wrong. Another night creature glides through Manhattan's concrete canyons. On a quest of his own. He's a dead man, brought to wretched life, a slave from hell who seeks redemption. And some of his friends are missing. Not far away. A couple of sick jerks out for what sick jerks call a good time. I'm not gonna do it, Gorky, I'm not gonna do it. Do it, man, do it. Hmm? You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. Do it, man. Look at him. He doesn't even wake up. Ga gallon of gasoline on him. He doesn't even wake up. Do it, man. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hey. Fire can't do that. It's coming after it. It's coming after us. It's weird, man. Magic or something. Yes, magic. Magic brewed in the depths of hell. Which is where you are going. Unless you give me a damn good reason not to send you there. Dusty freak. What the? I said, Dusty, man. Do it. You're being stupid. Like I said, stupid. When you meet Satan, say hello for me. A tiny burst of hellborn power squandered. Yeah! Ah! To spawn a bit of peak. But to the eyes of this becoming witness, who wants an act of murder. Damn microphone. Keeps on falling. Yeah. You must be Earl. There's one good thing about murderers. You don't feel bad about taking a cheap shot at them. Like getting good momentum from a 30-foot drop and driving your heel into the murderer's kidney. Shouldn't cause too much damage. He's six months in the hospital and he'll be ready to face the judge. This is my turf, Batman. Back off. Impossible. 
is all he should on the side of Crippled, but he pivots expertly, delivering a kick of his own that makes all the air leave Batman in a rush. Sorry, this microphone keeps falling down. It's like punching a brick wall, like kicking a slab of granite. Yet still, he misses like a man. He does his breathes like a man. What is his face made of? Al can't take punishment of the superhuman variety. No reason to be nice. Batman aims for those three wounds. The results should be just short of lethal. Knock it off, Batman. I'm not in the mood, and I don't have the time. Got time for this, punk? Another kick at the slab of granite. A spine of a man would shatter, but he isn't even breathing hard. Breathing, that's it. Whatever he is, he still breathes and needs to breathe. Get some distance. There's a reason you carry your utility, utility belt, idiot. Batman tells himself. Use it. Give the man some nerve gas, enough to make a mob take a nap. It seems to slow him down. It seems to soften him up. You had enough in your dreams. It feels like cheating, thinks Spawn. Is it cheating? I'm overpowered, Batman realizes. It's retreat or die. Using the magic to make himself strong to beat the crap out of Batman. If I'm dead, he tells himself, I'm no use to anybody. And don't you come back here. You got your turf and I got mine. I'll be back. All right, you little punk. Count your blessings. I don't want you off so easy. I showed him. I showed him. Here. Gas was it, isn't it? Spawn realizes his magic and his stomach. It's worse when you haven't eaten. It takes that much longer to convince the old gag reflex that there's nothing left to puke. Batman gets ten blocks before he needs to give it out. He spends the next few minutes teaching himself how to breathe without coughing. Then he goes to work on his right arm. Fitting it into the back of its socket, he twists himself around until his bones of his spine are a bit less tangled. This is all very painful, which is good. It keeps his mind off the humiliation. The punk was holding back. Meanwhile, the building is old and crumbling. The door looks like it would break if you leaned against it. But once you scrape off the fake rust, the lock is a brand new attacky. State of the art security for a mission. Back when he was a soldier, back when he was alive, Al Simmons, Al Simmons could Pick one of these beauties in ten seconds flat. Now it takes him twelve. A junkie named Stevio led Spawn here. He seemed to know something. You can check in, said Stevio, but you can't check out. Whatever this place is, it's built for more than feeding people. Behind him, oiled servos whirl, almost silent. <laughs> Another precious little piece of hell released. Released, wasted. Better to use a weapon at hand. From the wreckage, something living. What? What? Chuck, I don't know where I am. Chuck, what the hell? Who did this to you, pal? I don't know who I am. The last moving piece of the robot staggers into the wall. Circuits him to life. My dear, my friends. Oh, that's why. You've worked so very hard all these months. I'm so very proud of you. You are ready now for a final stage of your rehabilitation. I can't feel my arms. The parish said your body's poisoned and become perfect servants of society, free from guilt and pain, free from choice. Her voice is like music, hypnotizing. Then, like a thunderclap, a fragment of memory, the memories of Al Simmons' soldier on a, some ghastly foreign battlefield. She was smiling. Men screamed and died, and she was smiling. I can't feel my legs. 
The helicopter surges, begging for release. Spawn does not fight it. And now here, her sick experiments continue. The punk was holding back, humiliating. Don't dwell on it. Plot, pat yourself up. You'll be ready when duty calls. A strange sight, the bat signal, over the skylight on Manhattan. A strange sight, but a welcome one. If Batman is still in pain, he does not know it. A makeshift bat signal, a plea for help, from an exquisite angel of mercy. His head almost spins, looking at her, listening to her. Were he not what he is, he would call this feeling desire, but he is what he is. A security camera spotted that thing that did this. Batman is all red cape and chains if reduced my beautiful mission to rubble. And now I fear it will do worse. Tonight a fundraising aboard the Heel of the World ship is rumored the president may attend if anything should happen. Oh, Batman, all my dreams are in your hands. We will be stopped, Doctor. He won't get anywhere near your ship. The punk was holding back. Batman asked to even the odds. A phone call to Alfred, and two hours later, a package, and Batman is ready. In the filthy alley, Spawn calls home. Batman's nerve gas proves to be the gift that keeps on giving. That's right. Just let it out. Don't fight it. It's the only way. Can't Al, your blessing, Al. The rest of us feel like it every day. Yeah, I guess I do. The Creeper did this to me. Batman, if he's not an idiot, he's learned his lesson. Batman, you tell the best stories. It's not just the story, it was Batman. And if he's wondering for Nadia Valdor, or Margaret Love, as he's calling herself, then he's not the hero everybody says he is. Kind of like Elsewords, huh? What are you talking about? Hey, look. And I'll do what I did to him, what I'll do to her. Uh, Al, maybe you ought to turn around. Huh? <laughs> the power of gloves, it streams through Batman. He can laugh as wounds that just hours ago help, left him helpless. And most delightful of all, he faces an opponent who can take a world of punishment. No need for the useful restraint. You idiot. You're an idiot. I'll tear you apart. In your dreams. Back when the soldier, back alive, Alzheimer's didn't need magic. And now, with little magic to spare, he fights the way he was trained to fight. Dirty. Talking trash. You're talking trash. It won't help you. I'll break you in half. I'll break you in half. Sloppy fighter. Stupid fighter. No discipline. No b discipline. Stupid fighter, stupid punk. <laughs> had it. You've had it. You're done. Just warming up, you stupid punk. <sighs> Give it up, punk. You're finished. Just look at you. You're finished. Look at you. You can't even get up. You're the one who's finished. I'll rip you to pieces, undisciplined slob. Catch my breath. Just guessing my breath and I'll break you in half. <coughs> we we'll to change it, that's right. And just when they've beaten each other nearly senseless, the alley shudders. Cyborg mind slaves sent by Margaret Love to make sure there aren't any loose ends. She can't be exposed and she can't be stopped if Batman and Spawn are dead. They can't give up. Right, that's the end of part one, otherwise it's going to go on forever.